support. Of course, we told you it was coming. It's here now. And what 64-bit support means is the digital performer has access to all of the RAM memory that's inside your computer. Uh, so if you're running large sample-based virtual instruments, now those instruments can take advantage of as much RAM as you've got loaded into the computer. We are still also supporting 32-bit, so if you're running on a legacy system, you have a choice of running 32 or 64-bit. Digital Performer is taking advantage of the latest technology in the Macintosh operating system. 100% Cocoa is programmer speak for very smooth graphics. We're taking full advantage of the latest tools inside the operating system and of course the hardware multiprocessor support that's been there for some time, but DP is cutting edge technology. The new features in DP8. Well in DP7.2 we introduced something called themes and we've added to that in DP8. Let me show you. This is Digital Performer version 8, and I'll go up to the Digital Performer menu and open the uh, Preferences window and go to Themes. Let me show you exactly what themes are. Maybe I'd like to change the look of the program and uh, get a nice wood grain look. Or maybe I'm using Digital Performer on stage and uh, I don't want a big glaring light coming off of the screen. Maybe I'm feeling uh, like I'm from outer space and I want a, a bit more of a, an alien look there. So these are different themes or, or skins, if you will. Digital Performer is the most customizable DAW out there. You set up the interface to work the way that you want to work. So 14 new preset themes, and you can even go in and customize those themes uh, to your own specifications, if you like. A lot of people make their living using Digital Performer for sound for picture, post-production and film scoring, writing music for picture. DP is a standard tool for that type of job. So the video engine in Digital Performer is very important. Basically, we've gone under the hood and completely rewritten the video support inside Digital Performer. The first obvious thing is that Digital Performer will now work with all of the Motu video interfaces. So if you're playing back a movie track from Digital Performer, you want to put it on a dedicated monitor and use a Motu video interface for that, you can do that. There's a bunch of other features as well. Uh, before I play the clip, I I'd like to give uh, thanks to Elias Arts and Goodby Silverstein and Partners. Uh, they lent us the clip, which was scored in Digital Performer that I'll use for my examples here. So let's uh, go get our movie. Here's the movie window. First thing I'll do is I'll show you that I can right click on the movie window and get a contextual menu. So I set my movie start time, the size of the movie. If I want to send the movie out through a Firewire output or through a Motu video interface, got all those choices in there. All right, we'll start playback. Now you see I have a nice little transport control in here to work with. Now, if you want to, you can extract the audio from the movie into a track in Digital Performer, but you don't need to do that if you don't want, because the audio output of the movie is piped back into Digital Performer, and the timing of the movie audio is sample accurate to your sequence. And this is very important, so if you've got dialogue or sound effects or anything else going on in the movie, you've got accurate timing for the sound. Now watch what happens when I double click on the movie goes to full screen mode. Double click on the movie again. It goes back to normal size. So if I have multiple monitors connected to my computer, I can put the movie onto another monitor, blow it up to full screen. So new uh, video features inside Digital Performer. Now let's talk about something called Punch Guard. I'll just show you how it works. Go back to Digital Performer. I've got another sequence set up for an example. Cool feature in Digital Performer, the ability to have multiple sequences inside a single session file. I've got a track ready to record. I, I want to do a little bit of recording here, and uh, I need a source of audio. Aha, a human being with a guitar. Dave Wood is going to help us out here. Excuse me. And, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to record a little bit of guitar into this track. You see those red arrows there? Those are punch points. I set an automated punch in and punch out. You could use a foot switch, you can sit here and press on a key, but you can punch in and out of Digital Performer, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I'll record on the track, and away we go. Okay, so there's the punch, and it did exactly what you'd expect. But Dave started playing before the audio punched in, and he kept on playing after the audio punched out. 
Does that mean that we lost that audio? Not at all. Because what Punch Guard does is it has pre-roll and post-roll record going on. So you will never clip off the beginning of your punch again. And something that I do way too often is uh, I'll track a band, the, 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 tra the take is finishing, the band's hit the last note, great, stop, ah, I clipped off all the cymbal ring. Now I can just go in there and reveal what, uh, what got recorded. So punch guard, new feature inside DP8. And a lot of new stuff in DP8. Plugins. Digital Performer has always shipped with very high quality plugins. We've got 64 bit mastering plugins, surround sound plugins, convolution reverbs, and in DP8, we're adding in 15 new high quality plugins. We're using convolution modeling and we're using physical modeling to uh, model some vintage hardware stuff. I'll show you what we got for these new plugins. Some really, really usable tools here. We switch over to our mixing board. And uh, I've, I've got a recording of a band. This is just basic tracks. Here's my drums. I'm going to solo up the kick drum. Got a bunch of microphones on a drum set. There's no processing on that kick drum. You're going to hear a little bit of bleed from the rest of the kit. So there's the kick drum. If only an engineer could get excited. Ooh, listen to that. Let's listen to that kick drum. All right. Let's see if we can enhance that a little bit. I'm going to open up a plugin called Subkick. Now, you might have seen people in the studio use a small uh, speaker as a microphone, a 5-inch or an 8-inch speaker in front of the kick drum. And what that speaker does is it works like it works as a microphone, but because it's got the very large diaphragm, it can pick up very low-frequency sound. This is what this plugin is emulating. We've got a mix control, and when this mix control is all the way over to the left, we're hearing just the original dry kick drum signal. As I move the mix control to the right, you're going to hear the sub-kick effect come in. All right, so now it's 100% of the uh, synthesized signal. Pitch control, resonance. Let's see, look at the screen shape. Let's see if we can find the resonant frequency of the uh, Anaheim Convention Center. Got a drive control here. Tighten that up a little bit. Get the pitch that you want. Bring back the original kick drum in. There's the dry kick. And there's the sub kick enhancement. All right, so that's our sub-kick plug-in. Now I'm going to bring the rest of the drums into that solo group. So we've enhanced the kick drum, but I think we need to help out the rest of the drum set. So I've got a subgroup here, and I've got a plug-in on the subgroup. This is our dynamic equalizer. This is a multi-band equalizer, and each of the equalization bands has its own compressor. So we'll start off by looking at the low shelf here. All right, these are the controls for the compressor for the low shelf. Turn the threshold control all the way up so there's no compression happening. And uh, we'll bring in that low shelf filter. We really push the bottom end up. It's definitely flappy, it's a loose bottom end. Now we compress that signal. We've got a gain reduction metering right here. We can see exactly what we're doing to the low end. So now we can boost or cut a frequency and control the dynamics of that frequency. Go to the high shelf, bring that in. Again, great graphics to show you exactly what you're doing to the signal. All right, now let's go to one of the uh, mid bands. And we'll solo that mid band. You can really zoom in on the sound that we're looking for. Okay, take it out of the solo group. Bypass. Bring back the dynamic equalizer. And now we have tightness and sparkle to our drum set. So that's the uh, dynamic multiband equalizer. All right, so we got our drums sounding good. Now let's get the bass happening. I have a synthesizer bass, and this is actually a, a core uh, uh, synthesizer going through a guitar amplifier. You'll hear a little bit of leakage, but it's a mono signal. Can we make that a little bit more interesting by bringing in the ensemble chorus? It was stereoize that signal. This is two very sophisticated modulators one for left and right. They can be linked if you like. You can link the various parameters. Delay, width, rate, symmetry, phase. Choose the shape of the modulation curve. All right, so we made that a, here we go. There's a riff coming up. You gotta time everything just right. All right, so we made that monophonic synthesizer a little bit more interesting with a stereo chorus. There's two bases on this track. There's the synthesizer bass 
and there's also an electric bass guitar. This was recorded direct. No ambience, no speaker cabinet. So we're going to bring in Live Room B. This plugin does convolution modeling of bass guitar cabinets, microphones, and ambient spaces. So I'll go call up a uh, preset here. And this is giving me a 410 cabinet with a dynamic mic, a condenser mic, and distance mics. Those microphones have a little mixer. I can send the microphones to separate outputs in my digital performer mixer if I like. Pan controls, tone controls, pre-delay control. I can vary the distance of the microphone from the speaker. Now we'll check out a 18-inch uh, cabinet with a sub-kick mic. Big, deep sound. Or maybe I like that uh, Ampeg SVT. Again, I'm using a sub-kick mic and a dynamic mic. Let's go to a single 15. You hear some ambience there, some reverb? That's because we've got these distance mics turned up here. Let's make the room a little smaller. So I'm going to change the room size right there. And you're starting to get into that Paul McCartney sound. You know, the uh, Ampeg B15 microphone about five or six feet away, sound bouncing off that wooden floor, getting into the mic. So you can really tailor your bass sound using the Live Room B plug-in. All right, we got drums, we got bass. Now it's time for the guitar player to have a little fun. Dave Wood is the most patient guy that I know. Thank you, Dave. All right. The guitar says you're welcome. All right. So let's follow the plumbing here. Dave's got a guitar, he's got a patch cord plugged into the guitar. Uh, the other end of the patch cord is plugged into a, uh, a Motu Z-Box impedance adapter. All right, that means that he's got the right load on the pickups as the sound goes into the 896 audio interface. That signal then goes up into Digital Performer, through Digital Performer, back out to the interface and out to the speakers. We're running this whole demo on a laptop computer. And I gig with a laptop. I play keyboards and, and guitar in a band. My gig rig is a USB keyboard, a laptop computer, my guitar, and an ultralight audio interface. All my keyboard sounds are coming off the computer, and all my guitar processing is being done by the computer. I've been using this rig for almost two years now. It works. It's very practical. I don't have to carry amplifiers and pedal boards and all that stuff. So let's see how this goes. We can give Dave an amplifier. Now, this is a physical model of the Vox AC30. Physical model means that we went back and looked at the original circuit diagrams and copied them with software. We then went and got the actual hardware, did a bunch of sonic tests on that, and we modeled the original Vox AC30. Right down to the two different generations of tone stack here. So we're giving a little bit of push. So we push those tubes a little bit. He's got a beautiful sounding tremolo. Now you can't have a guitar amp without a guitar cabinet, so I'm using Live Stage, and this is another convolution model of cabinets, microphones, and uh, acoustic spaces. Let's put that Vox AC30 through an 8-inch speaker. Off-axis microphone. Distance microphone. Put the microphone behind the cabinet. Or how about uh, we check out a, a 212 open back cabinet. You use this on stage. These are studio techniques that you can take on stage with you. Alright, let's go to the uh, 412 modern cabinet. All right, I know you like that cabinet the best there, Dave. And uh, we'll try a different amplifier. This is a uh, physical model of the Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. And it's really a three channel amp. And this is uh, Mesa Boogie's version of Clean. Alright, then we have the uh, Vintage Gain Channel. Then we have the Modern Gain Channel. So we got two amplifiers to work with. Alright, let's go back to our uh, slightly cleaner Vox there. So we got an amplifier, we got a cabinet, and how about some reverb? This is called Springamabob. And this is a convolution model of spring reverbs. Three different models of spring reverbs. So here's uh, three short springs. Here's three long springs. Or two long springs. All right, so we got our nice spring reverb over top of the guitar sound. Now we're going to start getting into some stomp boxes, some pedal effects. 
This is a physical model of something called the Dallas Rangemaster. The Dallas Rangemaster was an effect that was used in the late 1960s by people like Eric Clapton. Back then, if a guitar player was looking for distortion, they could use a fuzz box, but the fuzz boxes from the late 1960s sounded like a can of bees. So if you wanted that smooth distortion, what you typically do is you get a preamplifier before the guitar amp, so you would overdrive the input of the guitar amp. And that's what the Dallas Rangemaster does, but it's a high-pass filter, so it's a preamp that's pushing the treble, and we'll call this a lead switch. Play a little bit. Now we turn it on. Don't forget. Okay, so there's our high top booster. Again, I call that a lead switch. And we're going to follow that. Remember the old MXR Dynacom? Right, this is our Dyna Squash. And uh, this is an infinity limiter, infinity ratio limiter. MXR sold this as a sustain pedal, that's basically how it was marketed, but it's an infinity ratio limiter. And you know these old pedals, they used 9 volt batteries, they had very high impedance input, they were noisy. We've gotten rid of all of those problems, so if you want to use the Dyna Squatch on your snare drum or your vocal track, it's not limited to guitar. Alright, so we've got our uh, lead switch, we've got our compressor, now let's get into some modulation effects. Steely Dan, Donald Fagan, played uh, MXR Phase 90. Uh, put his uh, Fender Rhodes through that pretty classic phaser sound. There's the stunt setting. There's the kill setting. Captain Kirk uses the kill setting on his phaser. Uh, if you like uh, vintage hardware, check this out. Here's the Electro Harmonic Small Stone. This is our clear pebble. Uh, this is another phase shifter. Donald Fagan used the uh, MXR Phase 90 to give you a reference. Who used the uh, Electro Harmonics? How about Keith Richards on the Some Girls record? Vintage hardware modeling. A couple more effects to show you. Analog delay. This is the DOD analog delay. And let's hear a little bit of that. Now this is what happens to the signal as I change the delay time. Here it's shifting the pitch, just like the original hardware did. Right now we bring up the repeats. Just like the original hardware, you can make it self-oscillate. But none of the noise of that Bucket Brigade technology. You remember that old stuff. All right, one more effect to show you, and this is our analog flanger. This is uh, a model of the Electro Harmonics Electric Mistress. Classic flanging sound. All right, let's uh, put this all in context, make a little bit of music. We're going to play back some backing tracks here. And we're going to start off with the guitar just going through the box amplifier and live stage. But we've automated the effects, so as the track plays back, you're going to see the different effects turning on and off so we can audition them and hear them in a musical context. High top booster. The string of a mob.
Dave Wood, ladies and gentlemen, helping us out, working hard for your entertainment and information. All right, we're not done yet. I got one more thing to show you in today's demonstration. I told you I had a big surprise at the end of the demo today. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Digital Performer version 8 running on Windows. Nathan, there'll be time for you to deal emotionally with all of this, but right now you have to get your shit together. Who are you, really? Nathan Brock, targeted for being found. I'm one of your keepers, Nathan. I'm put in place to look after you, just like Mara and Kevin were. They died protecting you. This is crazy! Call the police or something! I already tried. I dialed 911 back at the hospital and some guy came on the line saying he was with the CIA. Frank Burton. Burton. Full screen video? What? I did. Can't be trusted. There are only four of us who knew your identity. Digital Performer 8 is identical on Macintosh and Windows. It's the same program on both platforms. Well, by the way, I'd like to thank Ed Shermer, uh, the composer uh, for the feature film Abduction. And to be honest, Ed did the, uh, the composition for this movie on the Macintosh on Digital Performer version 7, but we took his session from Mac and DP version 7, brought it over to Windows, and opened it in DP version 8. So let's tell you a little bit about this. Digital Performer is running on Windows 7, and we're actually running on Hewlett Packard computers today. Big shout out to Hewlett Packard. Great machines, the HP Z800 machines. DP is uh, shipping for Windows 32 bit and 64 bit, both on Mac and on Windows. Support for VST and Rewire on the Windows platform. And DP8 is shipping in the same box for Macintosh and Windows. When you buy Digital Performer, you have your choice of platforms to run it on. And that leaves one question, which is when? We're saying spring 2012, but as you can see, we've got it up and running on the screen. We've also got it on our satellite stations. If you'd like to go talk to the technicians and see Digital Performer in action, DP version 8, running on Macintosh and Windows. This is Dave. I'm Dave. We're Motu. We'll do another demo in about half an hour. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Have a wonderful show. Okay.